I want you to look closely at this footage from the Six Day War. It's when the Israeli army captures the old city of Jerusalem. Look right there. You see that chauffeur? Besides for Rosh Hashanah and Yom Kippur, the chauffeur was blown at Sinai. It was blown when the walls of Jericho came falling down, when King David brought the Ark to Jerusalem, and in more recent times, when Jews were defying the Spanish Inquisition and the Soviet Union. Finally, God's gonna blow the shofar when Mashiach comes, when the Messiah arrives. Why is the shofar the instrument of Jewish defiance and Jewish ecstasy? Let's travel to Brooklyn for a second, to the corner of DeKalb and Flatbush Ave. There's a group of Chabadniks who dedicate months of their time to teaching students about the shofar. They run a mobile shofar factory. While they have a warehouse, their operations run mainly out of their minivans. They travel around during the high holidays to educate students about the shofar. Today, they're presenting in Long Island University. Perhaps these holy men had the answer. Meet Reb David. He's been doing this for close to 20 years. Rabbi, why do you dedicate so much time to this? The goal is to bring Mashiach faster. Every mitzvah we do brings Mashiach faster. And when people are happy about mitzvahs, they will do them. He went on to teach the students about the shofar. You know what this horn is from? It's from the bull family. I'm not sure which animal. Same thing here. Bison. These are from the bull cow family. Ox. Can they be used for a shofar? Oh, oh, let me guess. Uh, golden calf, horn of the cow, don't remind God. You know what I'm saying? Do we want to remind God on the day of judgment of the sin of the golden calf? We don't want to, and we don't use any horn of an animal that is from the cow family. What? No, I, no, I didn't hear the answer already. <laughs> All right, so hold on a second. At this point, the rabbi goes on to start talking about the binding of Isaac, a kedas yitzchak. And we all know the ultimate self-sacrifice of Abraham and Isaac. This event birthed the identity of the Jewish people. The horns from that ram that was used instead of Isaac was actually saved and used by Sinai and many other significant events throughout Jewish history. And then went on to teach the students how to blow and make the shofar itself. So here's how the shofar is made. Step one, remove the bone from inside the horn. Step two, saw the tip off the horn and remove it. Yeah, you gotta reel it, saw it off, get in there. Number three, drill a hole into the tip of the horn. Then you use this other saw to kind of open up the hole that you already made at the tip of the horn. Step five, sand the mouthpiece so you don't cut yourself. And finally, to make it shine, polish it. And there you have it, you have a shofar. As the students began making their shofars, I began thinking about what the rabbi said, the origin story of the shofar, and how it will play throughout history until Mashiach. I still wanted to figure out though, why this horn? What makes it so special? Something still wasn't sitting right with me. Now, travel to the 1700s with me. The Baal Shem Tov is revealing some of the deepest secrets of Jewish existence to his followers. He revealed that a Jew's relationship with God goes far beyond logic. It explains why deep down, the Jewish soul would rather die than go against God's word. It's a chok for the Jewish people, but a mishpat for God. Meaning, for us, the commandment has no reason, but God has his reasons. So check this out. Rasajigon, the Gemara, even the Ramba, give reasons for why we blow the shofar. But despite that all, Hashem insists that this mitzvah is a chok. It does not have a reason. As we approach the end of the year, when the Torah has been completed to the point where we've learned all 613 commandments, something remarkable happens. God says, pause. Here's Rosh Hashanah and Yom Kippur. So here's the thing. We, we, we're given a lot of reasons for why we do things in the Torah. God provides us with reasons for a lot of things. And actually, we can pretty much figure out everything in Judaism. That's the beauty of our religion. We have answers for everything. We even have answers for the shofar, despite God saying, it's a chok. There is no reason. But here's the thing, there's a moment of reflection, if you will, that transcends all logic and all reason. That's the mitzvah of shofar. God, our loving king, reminds us that although we may never fully grasp why everything happened, he's taking care of us. He's our king. The sound of the shofar from Sinai is etched into the soul of every single Jew. Throughout history, at all our peaks and all our valleys, we are reminded of Sinai, the event where God took us as his nation and became our king. Although we may not know why we're suffering or why we're truly celebrating, ultimately, we know. Not because we understand, but we know who our loving king truly is. And ultimately, this sound will usher in Mashiach when all our questions will be answered.